a lot of people get well and truly confused by the prophetic writings in the Bible. And if you're anything like me, you've probably spent time in your past at some point or other attempting to decipher words of Isaiah open here, or indeed uh, the amazing book of Revelation, which we have at the end of our Bible. And I would like to just say something about the nature of the prophetic ministry, not the pathetic, but the prophetic ministry for a moment. There's lots of people running around saying they're prophets and so forth, and the majority of stuff that passes as prophecy actually probably isn't, um, or it is, but it's interpreted uh, without clarity and perhaps incorrectly. There's two aspects of prophetic ministry. One is there has to be a divine encounter so that there's some kind of a spiritual input that is beyond rational human understanding. In other words, prophetic ministry doesn't come from the mental capacity of the believer, but it comes from the heart. And it wells up from the heart and gives an impression or a sense or vision even of um, that comes from, hopefully, from the Lord. Now, once you get a vision or an inspiration or a sense of something in the spiritual realm, that's where the danger comes because we tend to then go into our natural thinking to try to work out what this means in this situation. I had an impression from the Lord regarding um, something that was going to happen and I thought in my mind, this was a week or so ago, I thought in my mind it was relevant to the United States. And I didn't go public with this and that's another thing, so you have to be really careful about going public. I wrote it down in my journal but I didn't go public with it. And then the um, explosion happened in Beirut and I realized that actually probably what I was sensing was um, a word or a sense of, of connectedness with Beirut and in their day of suffering, especially because I got this impression just a few hours before that explosion happened. So there I got it wrong but I didn't go public with it and it was because I had a sense that was probably correct but I thought in my natural mind I interpreted it with my own natural thinking. So this is where prophecy can go off the rails when we put our act, when we superimpose our own natural thinking on something that the Lord has given us in our spirit. And it becomes even worse if we say thus says the Lord. So I'm very wary of anyone that comes up and says, thus says the Lord, um, with very few exceptions. And the other thing is that if you have a sense, a prophetic word or word of knowledge or word of wisdom toward an individual person, be very careful about sharing it because you need to allow that person to experience God for themselves. And it's very likely that the Lord shows you something about a person so that you can pray more effectively for them. Because it's very easy for a prophetic word to become a controlling word. And that is not the way God operates. So, um, and of course that leads on to the other point that if you get a sense or an impression of something you're reading the word or in prayer or just waiting on God, or you get a vision even, that might well be just for you and not for the wider community of faith to blow everybody out of the water, even a charismatic group. So that's why the Bible talks about discernment as being so very important. We have to cultivate an attitude of surrender humility and realizing that we don't live on the gifting, we live on our relationship with Jesus 
and the gifting is something that flows through us either for the benefit of others or for the benefit of our prayer life so we can pray for others or just to build yourself up in the most holy faith and to give you direction, the clarity and wisdom of the things that are to come. Most of the prophetic that I've walked in in at least in the last 10, 10 or 20 years have been things that really have affirmed to me that I'm hearing from God in the area to give me confidence so that I can just be generally um, a little bit more on target in my, in my ministry than if I was just going off on one. So there's certain things that will, uh, the Lord will warn me about or tell me about and then I'll see when it comes to pass. It's an incredible encouragement even though I don't ever go public with those things or very, very rarely go public. What I do do is I tend to write them down. And that's very rare, by the way. I don't wait on God saying, Lord, give me a word. And that's finally one of the real dangers of prophetic ministry. You can become addicted to the prophetic. And um, that, I mean, that can really lead to serious error to get addicted to the prophetic. Um, the Lord will minister, so he doesn't only quote speak, but he'll put an impression on my heart, a general direction of movement, if you like, or reveal certain things I can't even put into words. And it will come at the most unexpected times. You know, I might put on the radio and be listening to radio, BBC Radio 4, our main news channel in, in the United Kingdom, and something might hit me and think, oh wow, and I'll go and write it down. But very often it is for my own encouragement. And it's an osmosis process. When we, you know, when teachers will teach and they'll teach line upon line, precept upon precept, they'll, they'll have scripture or they'll have uh, the historical context down pat. Some people are very, very good at doing that because that's, that's their anointing. Other people they like a lot more free-flowing on one of these free-flowing guys. So for me, it has to be a part of me before I can share it. So I hope today what I've shared is helpful in discerning the prophetic for those of you that walk in the charismatic gifts of the Spirit. And if you don't, Paul the Apostle said, to desire earnestly spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And the prophecy that he's talking about there is primarily the words of encouragement to help other people in your community of faith, in your small group, in your whatever group you have there in your church, to encourage others to walk with God, to affirm them of the love and the mercy of God, and um, to encourage, to exhort, and to build up, it's not a gift to tear down or to insist on you must do this or you are a sinner. Very, very rarely, I'm not saying it never happens, it's very, very rare for a really, really heavy word to come. And if it does, seek discernment before you share it talk to others, share it with others who have mature spiritual gifts and find out to make sure it's coming from the Lord and not from your soul. You know, the devil doesn't have anything to do with this stuff, but our soul, our natural inclinations, our natural uh, thinking can indeed hinder uh, the Word of God flowing out of us. And that's because the Lord speaks to our spirit, but it has to come through our rational thinking. So, you know, I've got an impression of where I want to go with this talk, but it has to process for my natural thinking ability. So to the extent that my mind is renewed in the Word of God, that's the extent that you, in this rambling talk today, are going to get built up and encouraged. Well, I hope this has helped you. This is John Ruffle, and thanks so much for watching. God bless you.